AI has become so powerful and would fundamentally change how we build software. But what I realized is the current AI is only good enough to build prototypes, not products. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Aubrey. Today I invited Felix Wong to this interview and he is currently the co-CTO at Fundamental Research Lab. He was the senior director at Snapchat and also worked for Meta for many years help many users to use the AI product. So Felix, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience? Hi everybody, my name is Felix Wong. I'm currently the co-CTO of Fundamentals Research Lab and my career started at Microsoft where I first built enterprise software and then I transitioned to Meta where I stayed for 10 years learning how to build social network and scale software for billions of people. Most recently, I really want to get into the frontier of AI research, and that's where I'm at. So you mentioned you want to get into the front end of AI research. What opportunities or what is the exciting things you discovered in that space? AI has become so powerful mm -hmm. and would fundamentally change how we build software. Yeah. Right. So how we build the software as to, because I know that you have the deep engineer background. So there is a way how people build software, for, like doing the front end, back end, the connecting to database. So with the AI, what do you see the new format of work? Yes. So with AI, I think there are three ways to think about it. One is, you can build a foundational AI, which mm. are building the foundational models, right? The second part is how you can build new experiences on mm. top of these new brains, mm. right? You can call that AI applications. Yeah. And that can be building, automating a doctor, automating a lawyer, or different roles inside of a company, like mm -hmm. a recruiter. Yeah. Or a HR specialist. Right. And then there's the third dimension, which is the traditional software. Mm. You build a database, you build distributed systems, mm. you build cloud services, yeah. you build accounting software. And all these software, they're not going away. Right. Right. But the development of it and how they're developed will be changed because people would be using AI to develop these products. Right. So how is that different from the wipe coding or AI coding? So you, you mentioned like using AI to change the way how we build the software. Is that similar thing as the AI coding? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have heard this term these days called vibe coding. And what that means is you don't really have to know the details. You can just use English right. as the programming language in yeah. a way. And the AI would build the whole app for you. Right. But what I realized is the current AI is only good enough to build prototypes. So that's why these things are great prototypes, right. but not products. Yeah. And you still need to look at the code and work with the AI to improve it so that you get proper software that you can scale through production. Yeah. And that is how I differentiate between the vibe coding mm. and software assisted or AI assisted programming. Right. So basically you need to have a good product design and you need to get the knowledge of the workflow from end to end, how it works, and then use the AI to achieve this workflow and make it more efficient, more advanced compared to before. In the past, in different industries, they use different software for the consumer technologies, for education, for healthcare, and there is a good chance for us to using AI to make this software more powerful or like accelerate the way we create this software. Accelerate software development. Right. So I observed that mm. for big company, they have massive user base. They have the data and they have all this regulation already in place. For the smaller company, are leaner to build a product and they can make a fast decision based on the new trend of the demand. So how do you see a startup company or a smaller company, they can compete with the big company and where the opportunities sit? Yes. I think s small companies have their own advantage. They also have to be 
smart so mm. that they don't pick areas where you have to, you don't have the resources that you need. Right. Which the big companies have. Yeah. For example, if you want to like build AI, because you need a lot of extra data mm -hmm. creation and a lot of infrastructure to train, mm -hmm. where big companies have money to, they also have the machinery to accelerate research and training. Yeah. But on the other hand, big companies have a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. For example, they can execute a lot faster because by definition, they're a smaller team. They don't have to spend a lot of time aligning between each other. Right. They also usually have higher intensity mm. because they all have like a higher ownership mm -hmm. of the problem, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Not succeeding has an impact to the company. It's not just a job. If it doesn't work, it's just not like you lose your job. You lose your whole company and you also let your employers, employees lose their job too. Right. right? You right. have a big responsibility. Yeah, you're fighting for survival. Right. And that itself, right, is the natural advantage. Yeah. For your current company and uh, you are working on this, also using AI to uh, accelerate the software developments, do you see this is something, because it's very popular area, right? Anthropic and Cursor and so many other companies, they're already doing it. What's the part you think people can still succeed in this area? Yeah, I, I would go back to what I shared earlier. Is there are three paths that people can look at, right? If you want to work on AI or software, right? Mm -hmm. You can work on fundamental AI research, right? Making the models better. And there are a lot of companies doing that, big and small. Mm -hmm. You can also look at building AI applications. Big companies are trying to do that. Medium-sized companies are trying to do that. And startups are also trying to do that. And you don't have to build a foundational model, you can call it. Mm -hmm. You can build a UI on top of it. Yeah. And last but not least, you can work on traditional software. Mm. Distributed systems. Oh, so that's where your company is focused? They're working on AI research. Okay. That translates to products. Got you. And we're actually building, and our aspiration is to build digital, digital humans. Oh. And to achieve the dream of building digital humans, one of the steps that we are taking is to figure out what is needed immediately for mankind. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem we can solve immediately. Yeah. And the first problem that we have found traction in or one of the first we have found traction in is really an Excel agent. It's an AI that can help you operate with spreadsheets. I see. And we are combining research to create the best products. Got you. So you focus on MVP product you want to build and this is the one of the pinpoint you discover. Right. Got you. But you know, there's one question for myself because in this market, there are so many roles was re were released and it has the title of AI. AI engineer, AI product manager. And it's just so sudden because not many people worked on AI before and suddenly people hire only AI related roles. I wonder how, when or how did you make your AI pivot? And how, for the people who are not ready for that, how do they start working on it? I think it depends on your passion mm. and how much time you want to invest in it. I see. And I would go, f I can describe to you ideas from the most intensive to the least intensive. Yeah. The most intensive route is if you have like one to two, one to three months, you can get to the foundations, foundations yeah. of how machine learning works. Yeah. Foundations of how large language models were built, why they work, mm. how they are created. Mm -hmm. And the, all these resources are available on the internet. Yeah. Right? One just have to dedicate time to learn that. Right. And out, outside of that is to start 
using the different AI tools, right? Mm -hmm. From the basics of ChatGPT, Claude, mm. to the coding tools such as Cursor, and Claude Code CLI, mm -hmm. so that you can actually start experiencing what AI can offer you. Right. Right? For example, you want to build a to-do list app. It can be a web app or it can be a, an iPhone app. Mm -hmm. And you can use Claude Code CLI to do it yeah. without knowing software. Right. So basically, you discover a problem or pinpoint in your life or in your work, and you start looking at how to use these AI tools to build a prototype for this product and maybe iterate the details about this product and make it the real one. Right. And yeah. then through this process, you already know how to use AI to code, mm -hmm. even if you are not a, a computer science graduate. Yeah. Right? And you know what they are capable of and what they are not capable of. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're not just reading the news. Right. You have first-hand experience. Yeah. Yes. And it can be done in days. Right. But for, from your personal experience, did you go through the both intense paths of learning the basic model and the product experience and build the AI application? Yeah. I had to. So when did you start doing that? I started seriously looking into it around 2022. Okay. I can share with you my story. I taking the classes from Coursera. Oh. And then I started watching all the YouTube videos from Andre Karpathy. Okay. Right? There are like 10 essential ones. Right. I also took extra online classes hmm. free from Stanford. Right, to also on the fundamentals of machine learning. And that gave me the basics, right? And from then on, I dedicated more time to a build with AI. Mm -hmm. And I did what I shared with you earlier, which is using the latest tools, realizing what they are capable of and what they are not capable of. Yeah. So I think the career shift to AI is definitely not just the title change. It's about the dedication, study, and the time you invested in actually knowing this area. To being an expert is not by just saying or just by talking, but it's all the many hours you expend on this area. Right, and to be honest, there's a point in time that I felt I, my learning pace is not fast enough. I was learning after work, I was learning in the weekends, but I only have so much energy because I had a full-time job at Meta back then, and it's very demanding, Yeah. right? The same applies to when I was at Snapchat. Mm -hmm. As a result, I actually decided to leave Snapchat in June of this, this year okay. to go on a sabbatical so that I can dedicate full time. Wow. To know the craft well mm -hmm. and to have first hand experience. Yeah, that's So you need to take some step back, slow down, and clear up your mind, and then you find a path. Yes. And it was really difficult because you had a steady income yeah temporarily right right and then you're off to a better future yeah i think that's what i'm struggling with because when you have nothing if you are just a new grad you know what is right to learn what what the path you want to go forward with but when you already have something like you said the income or your you already have a job you first need to give up something and then to gain the new things right so you need to make the decision. Yes. You mentioned something very interesting you built in Snapchat. Do you want to share with the audience here? Yeah, so I led the engagement for Snapchat and part of that was figuring out how to build AI agents. Mm. Snapchat has a lot of teenagers and Gen Z as yeah. users. Yeah. So we were really figuring out how to build an AI agent for teenagers. <laughs> what agent did you build? Yeah. So we started figuring out what's the most useful to them, uh -huh. right? And the basic ones would be, hey, I need a person, a friend to talk to so that when I get bullied at school, I can, oh. I can have someone to talk to okay. and encourage me. Oh. There's also a need to help them understand the world, help mm -hmm. them, hey, why is this happening? What are they talking about, right? Mm -hmm. They can, people, 
usually have a lot of questions about things around them. We can help them answer that, right? So you fulfill their curiosity. Correct. Yeah. But ultimately, one thing that we have found that is useful for teenagers is uh, helping with their homework. So, <laughs> yeah. and we focused on that and became really good at it. Wow. So, based on your user segments, in Bay Area, like nine out of ten family, when they choose a major for their kids, the top on their mind is study software engineer. So that guarantees they have a high pay job after graduation. However, with AI replacing the software engineer work, the AI coding, that situation seems changed. And what's your suggestion to those students who are about to choose their major? How do they change their mindset? Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And let me explain. You explained it in a way that people were doing software because there's a lot of opportunities yeah. and money. Yeah. But with this change, that's not where the money is. Mm. And people don't have to do it for money. Yeah. And this allows the younger generation to do things that they're truly passionate about mm -hmm. instead of chasing that money. Yeah. Because the money is no longer there. Right. So I think it actually enables the young generation to go with their passion. Mm -hmm. Is it accounting? Is it a law degree? Or they, do they want to pursue, a, want to be a medical doctor? Or do they want to be an HR specialist, right? And they can just do what they want to do mm -hmm. instead of just all doing software. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And also, people who are really passionate about software, they should still do software. Mm -hmm. Because I really believe in the fact that if a person is really passionate about something, they'll be the best doing it. Like, it excites us if we have a job mm. that we want to go to every day. Yeah. When we wake up, we want to go to work. Yeah. And that only comes when you are passionate about the subject. You should be driven by your passion. Right. Instead of by the high payments. Yes. Or yes. expectation from others. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. And you can do software. Yeah. Right? And then on top of just traditional software, as I have explained, you can also build a AI. Mm -hmm. the fun foundational model, yeah. or you can also build AI applications. So software is not just a certain job for a certain people. It opens to more people and they can easily get access to software and build their own based on their needs. And, yeah. But as a person who still want to focus on this sector, they can still do something more advanced. Correct. Yeah. The, but the challenge is, let's say you're an accountant or you're a medical doctor, you also have to figure out how to be the best, right, in yeah. those fields. Yeah. And there are two things. One is we need to figure out how to not let AI make our brains smaller. Mm -hmm. Instead, we got to use and figure out how to leverage AI to make our brains bigger. Yeah. For example, there's so much work we can delegate to AI to do. Mm -hmm. We no longer yeah. imagine we give AI to write all our messages, to do all the homework. Mm -hmm. If we don't think, we never learn. Yeah. And our brains will become smaller and smaller. Could then agree more. So that is something that we have to be careful about mm -hmm. because it makes us weaker. Thank you, Felix. I really enjoy our conversation and thanks for sharing your career experience and also your thoughts in this AI era and give all this good advice to the audience in front of the video. AI is coming. Are you ready for it? You will get the answer after the study and all this exploring in this new world.